and welcome to the latest episode of the Kansas Moonshot Podcast, where we are shining the spotlight on amazing things happening in schools across the state. Whether you're one of the Mercury, Gemini, or Apollo schools launching some amazing redesign plans, or a teacher trying to do something a little different, I want to share your story. The goal is to celebrate the awesomeness all around us. Now, for this week's episode, I brought in a special guest. In honor of Mother's Day, I chose to interview my own mom, Rhonda Stock. Uh, she is a middle school special education teacher here at Santa Fe Trail Middle School, um, which is a Mercury redesign school. In fact, she teaches right across the hall from me. So, listen to her share her views on special education in a redesign school. Check it out. All right, so... Uh, for this episode of the podcast, um, first off, thank you for being on the show. And if you would like to introduce yourself uh, and then kind of where you're at, what school you're at, what you teach, that sort of thing. I am Rhonda Stock and I am Joshua's mom. <laughs> I had to say it. Uh, I teach middle school uh, special education. I teach a center-based resource room. My students all have some level of intellectual disability, and many of them are also on the autism spectrum. Excellent. And you are uh, at Santa Fe Trail. We're a Mercury yes. school. And so um, we'll talk a little bit about your experiences sure. with redesign. Um, I know you served on a couple of the committees. Mm -hmm. um, but just to start off with, why do you feel like there was a need for um, education to change in regard to our school redesign process. Right. Um, what, what are some of the things that you were hoping to get out of school redesign for your students in particular? I feel that we're in the 21st century and I feel like many of our educational practices are still based on an agrarian society model. And I believe that many of our practices are based in the 19th or 20th centuries. And we need to bring our practices more in line with the way the world works in the 21st century and beyond. Um, for my students in particular, I feel that the 21st century education experience should be as inclusive as possible. We have learned that everybody can learn on some level. In uh, Historically, students or individuals with intellectual disabilities have been marginalized. It was just assumed that they couldn't learn, that they couldn't be taught. And we have found over the, really over the last uh, few decades, that many of these individuals with intellectual disabilities can achieve far more than we ever dreamed possible. And I believe that the advent of more and better technology can also enhance their lives as never before. And what I was hoping to get out of uh, redesign is I would like to map out a plan for education going forward something that doesn't just necessarily discard the practices of the past, something that takes advantage of, of those things that are important, that do, do make a difference, but add to it and enhance it with things that reflect the world that our children are going to inhabit in the future. And backing up just a little sure. bit, I mean, we were doing uh, quite a few things right. Before Absolutely. we launched into redesign, um, we, we have been making a lot of progress, but this kind of gave you some room to mm -hmm. try things out and, and really yeah. kind of speed things up in, in that, that evolution. Yeah, I agree. Um, so we've launched our first year of redesign. Um, what are some things, some changes that you've seen that have really benefited your students? I find that the redesign, many of the practices that we've uh, executed this year lend themselves just naturally to differentiation and it it's it doesn't seem as forced to include my students and it's a challenge um i think our district olathe does a really really good job at drawing 
the uh, intellectually disabled student or the autistic student into the general education population. I think our school in particular, we have some amazing teachers that go above and beyond trying to include our students in a meaningful way, not just give them busy work, but to experience their content, their classwork in a way that makes sense to, to them at their level. So we were doing a lot of that right to begin with. But then with the redesign, it just seems like it's even more natural because there's so much more student choice. Mm -hmm. um, that really helps my students. They can tap into things that ignite their passion. And anytime you're passionate about something, you're going to want to learn more. Mm -hmm. And I have found that to be true with, for example, the Explo days. Yeah, I was going to say that, that seems to be the one that yeah, yeah. has made the huge, huge It has impact. made a huge impact on my students. Uh, they love having those choices. They love the interesting thing. One of my students, his heart's desires to be a police officer mm -hmm. someday. And so any uh, of the Explo day activities that offer an opportunity to interact with first responders or the military he signs up for. And he is so excited to make that personal connection uh, with the first responders or, or uh, the police officers or whoever is involved that day. So that is an example of how it, it just naturally differentiates itself. I also find a lot of times for my for some of my higher functioning students, when they go to the Exploration Day activities, I don't always have enough paras to send with them. So some of them have to be more independent. And often the teachers who are in charge of that particular activity may not realize that they're actually one of my students who is uh, supposedly intellectually disabled or maybe on the autism spectrum because they're able to participate fully and mm -hmm. there's no grades assigned. So they don't have to prove mastery over a topic that is not necessarily <laughs> something they can get mastery over. Uh, so th that is a huge issue, just, just the inclusion and the differentiation that takes place. And one way that you've offered some, um, you, you, you've modified what we do a little bit with mm -hmm. redesign. Mm -hmm. um, especially, for example, with mm -hmm. Exploration Days is um, like you get the uh, the list in advance mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So can you explain how, so if I'm, I'm a teacher and I want to apply this to my own school, um, what are some things that you, uh, you guys have figured out to help adapt what we've done for redesign for your students? I have found, it, it's almost a cliche, but communication is so important. I make sure that I communicate with the people who are in charge of the planning and the execution of Explo days or flex times or what I need, the win opportunities. Um, fortunately, the teachers who are in charge of these uh, activities, they're very good at reaching out to me and saying, okay, what do you want this to look like for your students? And we put our heads together and we figure out ways that my students can access the same opportunities, but in a way that's meaningful for them. One example is, uh, as you were saying, for Explo Days, my stu I get the list of p choices earlier. Mm -hmm. And I go over them with my students and I explain very carefully what each choice is, you know, what, what this orbit is and this orbit. And if you sign up for this, this is what you can expect. And then they make their choices and they give their choices to me. And I give them to Pinky McMillian, who I think she's been interviewed. Yep. She's time. been on the podcast. Yeah, of yeah course. But I was thinking she was. Mm -hmm. And uh, she plugs them in herself. Because what I found it with the first Explo Day, that when they unlock the online registration, it, the, the classes fill up so fast that my mm -hmm. students who need some assistance, they're shut out of some of their favorite choices because they can't access the internet as quickly and they can't do all the, you know, the little uh, uh, physical 
uh, keyboarding yeah. as fast as other students. So we found by doing this, my students basically get first pick and, um, it works out really well because they almost always get the things they want to do that they're most interested in. And then I can talk to the teachers who are in charge of those particular activities and find out, okay, what do they need to know ahead of time? Do I need to provide something? And we work it out. We can work it out ahead of time. And we've, we've done that a couple of times where I've, I've had some sessions that were pretty computer intensive Mm -hmm. and some students I would say, Okay, this mm-hmm. is the activity. Here's how we can modify it. Or, mm-hmm. hey, let's do this activity for half the time, mm-hmm. and then the other half we'll we'll do an alternative activity just to mm-hmm. to work it out. And it, it seems to all work out. It it really does. I we really have not had any problems. I've had students go on the field trips. I've had students participate in the uh, stop motion animation. Mm-hmm. I've had students participate in. Uh, just about every kind of activity. I have some students that love the sports activities Mm -hmm. and they have done really well. And I follow up with the teachers and and ask, you know, were there any problems, anything? And usually they said, you know, they did a great job. The, The gen ed students are very good about reaching out and uh, usually there are students that that like to mentor my Mm -hmm. my kids and that's a meaningful experience all the way around so if that was the only good thing that came out of redesign i would be pleased it's not the only good thing but that in itself is enough that that's made me really excited i wonder if there's a way we could even develop that further and almost have like a mentorship program where like like a kid, one of your kids signs up for an yeah. expo day and pair them up with one of those students who loves to um, just just participate, and make sure everybody's included, and then almost get that added level of engagement to making sure you've got a student there instead of having the teacher watching out for it and the parents watching out for it. Just right. I, I'm thinking about maybe exploring just what yeah. you said, and I was thinking maybe next year for our first expo day, having an orbit where students who want to mentor my Mm -hmm. students can meet with me and I can spend one entire orbit just teaching them this is this is what you do this is what you don't do this is how you can interact and this is how you can make a really good connection Mm -hmm. and then the rest of the day they find they're assigned to one of my students as a buddy Mm -hmm. uh, and they help my students access the activities uh even more so than they are right. now. And, and I think I've, I've been thinking along those lines. I also next year want to have my students more involved in the flex opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I know you've heard on the broadcast, if you listen to this podcast regularly, the, uh, a description of the flex opportunities. And that's an opportunity. Those are opportunities once a week where, uh, our elective classes in particular, if they need to pull students to finish a quiz or to finish some homework or extra band practice, extra band practice, like that, yeah. maybe they need to finish a cooking lab for their foods class. Um, and then those students whose work is all caught up, there are opportunities for them to engage in enrichment activities yeah. such as, uh, you know, basketball in the gym or other things that are as i, I run, said i run the innovation yeah. labs and yeah. my kids do, yeah my room's just open with all kinds of tech stuff that kids yeah. play with currently this year we just kind of have kept my students in my room mm-hmm. for flex and for win for what i need just because there were so many changes being thrown i i, I felt overwhelmed yeah. so i was like i'm just going to learn how to manage this part of it. And then next year I'll add more. That's why it's a three year process. And, um, the teachers again have been more than accommodating, but next year I would like to explore allowing them some of those opportunities for some of that enrichment type activities because they could really benefit from it. Uh, the socialization, also the physical activity. Um, we all know that any student can use more physical activity in their day. Uh, so I, I'm hoping next year to develop that more. Okay. So looking at that that future and those ideas you already have, um, are there any other things that you're looking at, um, things that we haven't really thought about yet or things that we might need to explore more for next year? I am 
one of the reasons that I'm on the redesign committee and one of the reasons that this is the first year I joined BLT or building leadership team, I feel like special education doesn't always have a voice in planning Mm -hmm. processes. And I think it's really important, not just my group of special ed students, but your resource students, Mm -hmm. um, ELL students need a voice, mm-hmm. not that they're special education, but uh, Each I would like to see really ELL. Needs yeah, a, they a really voice. do. Yeah. It's not that anybody tries to exclude the special education students or the ELL students or the gifted students. It's just that sometimes that if that's not your focus, it's easy to forget about it. Right. We were talking about this yeah. the other day. We were talking yeah. about. Um, like if you don't have experiences with that, right? You don't necessarily think we were talking about um, seatbelt safety yeah. and about how seatbelts are designed for your average height, size, male. Yeah. Be- just because of that's the way it's always been done, and the people the designers who are, are average, right? Size males. Right. And so if you don't have experience uh-huh. with that, that's why you need yeah. that diversity. So you need a group right. of people who are um, have experience with uh, every different type of group of students, so that they can bring that Absolutely. perspective. Yeah. And that's why I, I am hoping that we get more teachers from different areas involved in redesign mm-hmm. next year and on the BLT, the building leadership team, because I would like to hear their voices. I know I learn a lot just from listening to the other members of the building leadership team and their perspectives. You know, the gen ed teachers have such a different perspective than I do because it's, I actually have never been a general gen ed teacher. Um, I'm certified in elementary education, but I've always been a special education teacher. I love what I do and I feel it's what I was designed to do. But I also lack that perspective of a general mm-hmm. education teacher. And I like hearing their, their not complaints, but their concerns. And because some, usually they'll say something that I had never considered because like we were saying, it's outside of my experience. And I feel like it makes me a better leader, but also a better teacher to realize this is what some other teachers are experiencing. So I, I think that redesign gives um, opportunity for every voice to be heard. And I, I really like that. Excellent. All right, um, so that is it for this episode. Thank you for being You're on welcome. Mother. Uh, happy Mother's Day on <laughs> this special Mother's, Mother's Day. Day edition of the podcast. Um, so that is all I've got. If people want to reach out to you, what is your, I know you're on Twitter. What uh-huh. is your Twitter handle? It, at rstocksf. For That's Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Yep. And um, yeah, they can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. I don't post so much on Instagram, but I like to. You, you need some kids to show you how to do it. That's what I, I know. Have to do. I know. I, 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 you'd be surprised how much my students mm-hmm. teach me. They know so much more about the internet and technology. They're trying to teach me Minecraft right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and you're already starting to branch out and try some things I in did. Minecraft. I'm I proud did. of you for that. With the Minecraft education app, I, I taught a fractions lesson and it was actually very good. And the students, of course, were highly engaged. But it was a very, it was actually from Minecraft. They, they sent yeah. it to me and it, it was a very well designed lesson and it had some really good content and the kids loved it. So I'm trying to expand my horizons. All right. On that note, um, that is it for this episode. Uh, thank you for being here. You're welcome. That's it for this episode. For more information, check out my website, mrstockrocks.com. Now, if you have someone doing something awesome in their classroom, let me know about it. I'd love to have them on the show. You can email me at teachlikeaninja at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at teachlikeaninja. I've been your host, Josh Stock, sixth grade language arts teacher and self-proclaimed awesomeness expert. Until next time, book it forward and be awesome.